Well, now that you have Android Studio installed, let's go ahead and launch it and uh, look at just some very basics of startup here. Of course, it's a pretty big program, and so it takes it a few seconds to uh, get itself together and uh, load and launch. Oh, looks like I have a little problem here. Go ahead and cancel out of that. Hopefully you don't see a similar problem when you're starting up. But uh, I actually don't think that's related to my Android Studio since uh, I was just in there a minute ago. But once this starts up, uh, we're going to see that we have a few options here. And we're going to work through how we uh, build a very simple app. Um, the simple app that we're trying to build is one that utilizes... Uh, super user permission to run a command from the essentially from the terminal or the command line of the phone itself um, but that the user just has to click a button and it will go ahead and do that command for you so Android Studio uh, once again you know by the time you see this there's probably a slightly newer version available uh, so uh, you know if your version is not exactly identical I'm sure it would be just fine to follow this tutorial it'll probably work the same so the first thing that we want to do is we want to start a new Android Studio project and of course you know you need an application name and so we're gonna call it uh, our super user uh, app uh, company domain this part may be uh, blank in your case uh, or you just have to fill it in um, I just put my username and then dot com uh, you could put pretty much whatever you want if you actually have a company domain that would that would probably work just fine um, project location uh, this is just where you're going to be saving it on your uh, system which I actually want to just put it under testing for myself and so then the package name is a combination of this com dot Alaska Linux user dot our SU app the application name itself uh, and then you have uh, needed actually a project location a folder name so that's where we're going to be saving it um, and then we need to uh, check if we want to include C++ support or Kotlin support we're not going to be using that we're just going to be using uh, Java and shell and this is going to be really straightforward because I'm going to show you how you can do this with barely any code typing uh, so hopefully this will work out well uh, for you as as you need it um, but uh, so what we're going to do is we'll just hit next and you need to decide what uh, phone and tablet you're going to build for. Um, what's really cool is it will tell you um, essentially how much percentage of devices available will be able to run this. Now if you're building a super user uh, app that runs a super user command that's specific for a ROM that you're building, I highly recommend that you pick the exact version of the ROM that you are intending to build because you know it uh, it's going to have a very specific purpose. Um, in this case we'll just go ahead and leave it on Android 8 Oreo that's fine um, and uh, really the rest of this uh, is not important Android things uh, Android Auto TV where I mean if you're making something for a watch or for the TV or for the automobiles or the Internet of Things then this might be something to consider but really for the purpose of this tutorial we're considering that you're building ROMs for a phone or tablet so we'll go ahead and just hit next and then you get uh, what do you want to uh, what style do you want to build uh, what activity do you want and we're just going to use a basic activity so there's empty activity which is the default and then there's a basic activity and the basic activity is going to give you like the little menu at the top and a little you know plus button or a button that you can 
it's actually called a fob, a floating object uh, that you can move around or click on. So we're just going to do this basic activity and we'll say next. Ask you what you want to name your activity. Uh, honestly, at this point, if you're not familiar with uh, how uh, these things work, don't worry about it. Just leave it just as it is and say finish. It's going to take it a few seconds while it puts all that together and essentially builds the backbone or basics of the app for you, um, which is really, really handy and something that I really appreciate about Android Studio because I feel that you, the programmer, have to do the least amount of work, uh, but you have the option to go through and change anything and everything that you want to, but you don't have to, and I, I think that's a really big plus. So we're just waiting for this build to finish, and uh, lots of really cool things that we're going to look at here. But uh, as this installs, depending on what um, version of Android you decide to run uh, or to build this for, it may actually ask you to install uh, the different... Uh, oh, I'm not sure the word I'm looking for... Uh, let me look at uh, file settings. This is going to give me the word that I'm looking for here. Android SDKs. So in my case, I have already downloaded Android SDK, everything from 4.4 all the way up to 8.0, or essentially from 19 to 26. So I can build for any version of Android from API level 19 all the way to 26, and if I want 27 and 28, I can just go ahead and uh, check these boxes, click OK, and it's going to download those for me as well. So once again, making sure you have the right SDK, you're going to go File, you're going to go to Settings, and then here under Appearance and Behavior, System Settings is Android SDK, and you need at least the SDK for the version of Android you're trying to build. And I'm pretty sure if you don't do this step, when you click to actually run the application, it's going to ask you to go ahead and download it anyways. So so don't be uh, too alarmed if you miss this step, but uh, this is definitely where we would go through and pick what versions of Android you want to build for. And notice it goes all the way back to 2.1 here. So uh, lots, of, uh, lots of options of things that you can build with. So we're going to cancel out of here. And uh, just poking around a little bit while we've got things set up. Uh, this may look a little confusing to you, hopefully not too much. But over here on the left hand side, we have uh, the folders, uh, the tree of the app, as it were, the directories. It's got all of the Gradle scripts, which are important for how it's going to build this app and uh, a few things in there are kind of important. It's got the Java folder that's going to have essentially uh, three folders. It will have the folder just for your app, the folder for Android testing, and then the folder just for testing. Um, the important one is going to be the first one that doesn't have like Android test or test after it. And it's got this main activity Java, which is open right here all this code and you're probably looking at this like oh man what did I get into it's really simple we're gonna walk through some of this stuff and hopefully you'll have a good understanding of what's going on here uh, in a little bit so we'll definitely look at main activity in a little bit and then there's this uh, res folder right uh, resources and in these resources are things like drawable uh, where you have the background and foreground for the launchers, and we've got some layouts, and we'll talk about this stuff, menus and how the menus work, and everything like that. Again, we are going to be trying to keep this simple. We're just building a very simple app that's pretty much going to have one button, that when we click this button, it's going to run a command for us. That's a uh, super user command, and we're doing this because you might build a ROM where you need this command to be run. And so uh, this would be how you could do that. Uh, a really important uh, folder in here is this values, which we're going to look at, and it's going to handle our colors and strings. But we'll go into that a little later. And finally, here at the top 
is the manifest file, which uh, we will definitely spend a few minutes talking about. But uh, very simple, easy to understand things that we will uh, we will definitely be looking at. So hopefully this little introduction to just opening it up, this is what we see, uh, is, is helpful to you. Notice anything we open up on the left-hand side shows up on the right-hand side. And depending what it is, will change the format of how things look like. For instance, this is the content main. This is essentially how you like lay things out. And then you have, uh, and so it separates into several windows because that option has lots of different things that you can do. And then if you're in the Java section, it's uh, fairly straightforward, just text uh, with some little marker things on the side, which are kind of interesting. And then if you look at the manifest, it's also text, but none of these little markers on the side. So lots of interesting little things to look at, and uh, we'll definitely be taking a minute to look at each one of those as well.